Hello! I'm trying to get into the habit of filming all my designs from start to finish and I'm about to cast on a new pair of socks so I thought why not share the process with you. It might not be as fun with socks is what I was thinking because um, it's not as long winded as like shawls and tops but I thought we'd give it a go. Hopefully I record it all. I'm a bit of a of a bugger for um, starting the recording and then I just tail off because I forget but um, and I do a lot of the knitting at night time but yes that's what I'm going to do. So this morning I'm going to um, pick the yarn. So basically what happened was I had some other yarn which is here, bear with me, which is this yarn, which is absolutely stunning. Please excuse my ironing board. Um, I've told you before, it's reality around here. Um, so yes, I have this. I cast on a bit of a sock. This is different. The one I'm going to show you. Um, so cast on a sock. I'm going to put the picture up here of what I did and I realised that I loved the pattern but this yarn wasn't right for it. It's too dark. Um, this yarn is so beautiful. This is Nervous Fibres and it's Nervous Fibres or Nervous Fibre. Oh, I'm very close. I can't remember which one it is but it's called Deep Wood. Um, it's stunning but it didn't work for that pattern. So I wanted a different yarn and that's what I'm about to do. So that is the pattern I'm going to go with. Don't know what it's called. Don't know anything about it just yet. Don't know if it's going to work. But that's what I'm going with. Um, and I'm going to choose some yarn. So this is the yarn choice now. So the three yarns I'm thinking of choosing from is Beehive Yarns um, Oatmeal in her Audrey base. Giddy Ant Yarns in Lichen. Uh merino smooth sock base and Cookston crafts in her he he I never know how you pronounce that focus there we go um and that's in her superwash and superwash merino and nylon base and for that pattern I think I absolutely adore this I'm so like oh. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna go with this one for that pattern um, I just think the toffee kind of colour will really look pretty in that. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to put these two for another day. So here it is, caked up, looking very beautiful. So I'm going to be getting on with that soon. the socks have been named um I put a post on Instagram when I'd finished one of the socks just to kind of like tease them and show show what I was working on I've been really rubbish on Instagram this year I'm hardly posting at all um so I put a post of those up and people started telling me that they reminded them of like an hourglass and once they said that I could see the hourglass in there um I'll put a pitch the picture that I shared I'll put that up and See if you can see the hourglass. Um, 
So I started searching names to do with Hourglass and Sands of Time and things like that, but they're all taken hundreds and hundreds of times. And if you've watched me previously, you know that I kind of like to choose a pattern name that hasn't been used before. Um, one, because it makes your pattern easier to find, but two, I just like to to have something different, not be the same as everybody else. Um, so I try and choose something that is different. Um, so I kept looking, I kept looking. And then I thought of, I, I have played a game called World of Warcraft for a long time. Um, I haven't actually played for a while, but I do normally play it often. And in that game is a, it's not so much a spell. It's like a, like something that you can craft, um, called Vial of Sands. And, um, it's like a portion. You drink it and you turn into a dragon and then you can fly around and people can jump on your back and you can take them places. So, um, but obviously a vial of sand is an hourglass, really, isn't it? And so um, I realised no one had used a vial of sands before and so there we go. The sock is now a vial of sands. Ta-da! <laughs> so I've been a bit rubbish with my filming. Profile of Sands has gone into testing. <laughs> um, I I know I did a bit of filming of me knitting it <clears throat> when I was on the foot. Yeah, I've been rubbish, I'm sorry. But basically, um, I didn't film any of me writing it up. And I think it was because I kind of had enough on my plate. The write-up was really difficult. So the stitch pattern is a 16 stitch repeat. Sorry, it's really close. The stitch pattern is a 16, 16 stitch repeat. Um, and I hadn't really considered, so you do your sock sizes, 64, 56, 64, 72, 80, um, for example. Um, they all divide by eight, but, <laughs> In my head, for some reason, I was thinking, well, I'll divide by 16. I don't know why. Some of them do. 64 does, 80 does, 56, 72 do not. Um, and then, and I also had a size 48 stitches, which does divide into 16. Was it 48? Yes, 48 stitches. Um, but then also you've got like... When you've got it divided by 16, you then have to split that um, for the instep and some of them are only a half repeat and it's all a big mind bend. Then started looking at the stitch pattern to see if I could get two sizes to divide, to, to work by 18 stitch repeats. So I charted the stitch pattern and added stitches in to make it an 18 stitch repeat and that then worked for um, 56 and 80, 56 and 72, sorry, sizes. And then I had to figure out the split and everything else and when to split it um, because you've got to think when you're going around the sock, um, some of them have got two full repeats on the back, so therefore the front, which would be the instep, is two full repeats and that's not a problem, but some of them have a repeat and a half or two and a half repeats so then you've got to think of where the repeat begins on the other side so that it lines up with the leg it's really it's quite complicated <laughs> and um yeah just sometimes like sometimes that just comes really easy but this time it didn't and it did go into testing and that got pointed out to me that it wasn't lining up and then I realised that I hadn't split it in the right place. I'd split it from the beginning again of the repeat where around the back of the leg was a half repeat. I hope I'm making sense. So yes, I've now sorted it and it's now going ahead in testing and it's all seemingly going okay. There is five sizes. Um, yeah, so we've had a couple of hiccups at the beginning of the test. Um <laughs> but now I think it's okay. 
I think I think it's okay. I hope it's okay. Hello. Sorry, I look a state, but I'm stressed. So last night I was um, looking through Instagram, and I just I happened to search the circular yorks hashtag just to see if there's any nice circular york tops um, that I hadn't seen before, and. I saw somebody was making a circular yolk using um, the pattern that I've used in Vial of Sands. In my head, I've been thinking about um, doing a yolk top for Vial of Sands um, for next year. So I was like, oh, someone already done it. So I clicked on it and um, it basically led me to the poet... I think it was the poet sweater, I can't remember which one it was, there's a lot, um, by Sari Nordland. And then I clicked on um, one of Sari Nordland's posts about the sweater. And um, she had like, uh, it was like a post showing the different things she'd done in the poet um, stitch, which is what I've been calling Vial of Sands she calls poet or poetic and uh, at the end of the post was a pair of socks and it was almost identical other than I've done um, a eye of partridge heel and she's done a slip stitch heel and then followed through to um, Ravelry to have a look at these socks and hers are only in one size whereas mine are in five sizes but last night I was like I can't release them then um they're they're almost exactly the same they're not the same but they're almost exactly the same and this does happen like there's stitch patterns out there and we use we use the stitch patterns and we we work them out to put them into things and then you like envision it as as a thing, you you think, oh, that would make a good hat. That would make a good pair of socks. And then, and you know, there's only so many ways you can manipulate string and two sticks. So um, it happens and it's really unfortunate. But now I'm like, I'm in a turmoil. The only people I've told at this point in time is the testers in the tester group um, for the Violet Sand socks. I've explained to them and a lot of them have said for me to still release. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing, I think my only saving grace is that I've got five sizes and Sari has one. Um, so I think I might reach out to Sari and just see what she thinks. The last thing I need, Sari Norland is a huge designer and I've had a, a, a small issue before. My arrowroot socks were flagged up by a designer um, who is pretty big, but not as big as Sari Norland, Nordland. Um, she was pretty big. I'm not going to mention who she was um, because she was pretty rude. Um, but she'd messaged me about my arrowroot socks and said that she'd heard that I'd stolen her sock pattern. And when I looked at her sock pattern, they were very slightly different. Um, and so I messaged her and I said, look, you've got however many sizes you've got. I've got six. I've worked really hard on it. I had no idea that we had used the same idea. Um, I'd looked, I hadn't come across them. Um, if you want me to take it down, I will. It was already out. If you want me to take it down, I will. But I can send you a copy of the pattern so you can see that I haven't copied you. Like, this is out of my own head. It's just, we've used the same stitch pattern. Completely unintentional. Sorry about my dog. Um, and I offered to send her the pattern and everything and she just never ever replied to me. So I never took them down. I just left them. Um, but I, going up against Sari Nordland is a little bit different. <laughs> And I have no, I have nothing against Sarah Nodland at all. It's not like I'm, I'm going into battle. I just, 
um, she was there first. So if she doesn't want me to put them up, I won't put them up. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to reach out to her. And if she replies and tells me to not put them up, then I won't put them up. <sighs> I'm so frustrated. Like, this is just like, they were coming out next week. The testing is almost over. My dog is being really noisy. Um, can you lay down? Lay down. Um, yeah. Are you sure it's not now? Do you not want to look at me? Don't like being filmed, do you? <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, all I have is drying on the radiator behind me. So that's where I am. I hope you're having a nice day. I will keep you posted. Good morning. Well, good whatever time of day it is for you. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So yesterday um, was the dilemma of the poet socks. This is the Vial of Sand socks. Battle of the socks. Um, um, so I hope everybody realises that it's not a battle at all it's just me and Sari Nodland have had the same idea that's all that happened I emailed her as I said um, and She's replied this morning. So let me tell you what was said between us. So I said, hi, Sari. I hope you don't mind me contacting you, but I have a dilemma and I wanted to know your point of view. Basically, for the last few weeks, I've been designing a new pair of socks. I currently have them in testing and was planning to release them next week. Then, last night, I stumbled upon your poet socks and they're incredibly similar. I had no idea. My socks, which I'll attach a photo of, had an eye, have an eye of partridge heel and come in five sizes, but I think that's the only difference. I'm not 100% since I don't have your poet socks pattern. I was going to abandon the pattern completely, but my testers have told me to still release as there have been a lot of work to get them to five sizes, and so I wanted to ask your opinion. If you want me to pull the design, I will. You got there first with the stitch pattern. I can send you a copy of the pattern as it currently stands so you can see for yourself that I have not stolen your design or intentionally done this. Thank you for your time. And today she's replied. Hi, thanks for reaching out. No one can own a stitch pattern. So there's really no way for me to claim ownership over it. I think this is just one of those cases where great minds think alike. I think my pattern has larger patterns, whereas yours are smaller, and that is enough to distinguish them. However, there is a pattern called Nora Jones Socks, which looks a lot more like yours, and then she's attached the link. I know about this pattern because people have pointed out that my poet socks look similar. I, did, I don't mind you releasing your pattern, and if someone asks you about it, you can say that you've talked to me about it. Just be mindful, there might be questions, because the knitting community is very observant and vocal about things like this. Sorry. So I have replied, thanked her very much for getting back to me, and also said that basically, although the knitting community is lovely, it can also be pretty vicious when protecting their favourite designer and I'm very aware of that fact. Um, so, I am going to release my socks. I have clicked on the Nora Jones socks link and I will show you them now. Um, and they are similar to mine again. They still do have a slip stitch heel um, but they are also still only in one size and that is my saving grace. If I had designed these in one size there is no way on this earth I would release them now because they're far too similar to Sari's and they're far too similar to um, the Nora Jones socks. I don't know the designer Svetlana, Svetlana Garanina. I've never heard of that designer before. Um, that doesn't mean anything. It just means that um, she designed these socks and they're very similar to mine. However, 
um, they're in one size. And my saving grace is that mine are in five sizes and I have manipulated the stitch pattern to make it work into five sizes. Um, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> I really don't want to just go, oh, well, someone else has used the stitch pattern. Because as Sari said as well, nobody owns a stitch pattern. Stitch patterns are public domain. You can use them and plonk them into whatever you want. Anyone who tells you they own a stitch pattern, no, they don't. Um, so I am going to release them. I was really, really going to pull this. But the fact that both Sari and Svetlana have only released one size in this sock. And I've got it to work in five. So I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. Um, I will show you the Nora Jones socks now. So this is them. Um, so you can see here, it's very similar to mine. Uh, but I'm pretty certain, where's the picture from? Pretty certain, yeah, that's a slip stitch heel and mine is Ivory Partridge. So I do have some difference. She's also um, folded over her uh, cuff. So there's a difference there. And again, it's one size. So because of that, I'm going to go for it. I will undoubtedly have people um, saying something who are fans of St. Lana or fans of Sari, but um, I have spoken to Sari. Yeah. It's one of them things, it happens, it does happen. It's horrible when it happens. It it makes you feel like you're being kicked in the gut um, because you've got this great idea and you're like, oh, this this is going to be great. I can't wait to do this. And then, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, someone else has done it. And it is horrible, but the fact that I've got them this far and I've I was gonna release them like in in seven days. <laughs> They're coming out next Tuesday. Um I think my dog to finish scratching. You done? Okay. Yes, the fact that um oh Sansa. The fact that they were coming out in seven days and then and then then I discovered all this is like oh but no. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, wish me luck, eh? So it is photo shoot day for the Vile of the Sand Socks. You all know how much I love these days. Um, normally I have a little inkling of an idea for a photo, but I really don't this time around. Um, I have an hourglass. It's not it doesn't last an hour, it lasts 90 seconds. But it's a big hourglass thing. Um, and I have a terrarium. <laughs> so I thought, I'll show you, I'll show you. So this is what we've done in front of my cupboard that I think looks quite, I don't know, old worldy kind of, it's not. It's just a cheap thing, but um, it looks kind of oldish. And then my terrarium, you can see my footprints where I've walked through there. There's grass everywhere because we've been weeding outside, so <laughs> I've cleaned all the grass, <laughs> grass up. <laughs> Gotta show my true colours on here. I've cleaned all the grass up from around this area, and I've got my 90 second glass and my terrarium. So I was thinking of like standing in this spot here and like photographing from this sort of angle but I don't know I'll have to say I need to go and shave my legs first <laughs> oh honestly you get all the um all the best bits After I'd done a couple of the test shots, I was getting the socks on ready and all of a sudden my dog starts barking 
and it turned out there was a parcel coming. So obviously my trousers are rolled up here, so I had to quickly roll my trousers back down and dash to the door wearing one sock to get the parcel. The joys. <laughs> I didn't like the setup at all. So I um, have this, I'm gonna show you, hang on. So I have this like cream throw thing. Um, I also have this selection of dried stuff that I just use for photo shoots. It was, these were in, these willows were in a um, bunch of flowers that I had. I thought that one was gone moldy then. I think it's just the colouring of it. But yeah. Um, and then I have, like, I've bought dried lavender and dried wheat and bunnies and things like that because they're just handy to have. Faithful old sock blocker that always manages to draw attention because it's so beautiful. So that's in there. And then just, just a candle that, focus on it, that is pretty. Um, yeah, and my 90 second glass. So, um, it's not sand in there, it's like, like beads. That was my setup, um, and I think I got the photos. Yay! So, Viola Sands socks ended their test last night. Um, I don't think everybody finished. I'm just going through. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent yet. Um, some people did find the pattern quite tricky. It's not a beginner pattern. It is a tricky lace pattern. And it takes some concentration. Like I, I didn't just knit it. I had to look at the chart for every row and everything. You do, you, you do need some concentration for it. Um, not every row because some rows are knit, but you know what I mean. So I'm just going through. I always hand in like have a questionnaire for people to fill out when they've finished a test. So I'm just going through the questionnaires to see if there's anything that needs adding to the pattern. So that is what I'm doing. Um, I'm just working through the last few bits of the pattern and um, hopefully it's ready to go and then it's getting released on Thursday. Today's Monday, it's getting released Thursday. Um, I was gonna release tomorrow, but tomorrow is the 13th and I didn't wanna put any more spanners in the works. So Thursday. And that's it. The Vial of Sand Socks is now out. 
Um, it's always weird to end these videos because it's like kind of once I've launched, it's like, what else can I film? So this is me in editing mode. I'm editing the video to go out tomorrow and thinking, well, you need to stick something on the end of there. Can't just stop like that. So yeah, testing went well once we'd finished that little glitch at the front on the instep of the sock. Um, once I'd got over the whole, um, oh my God, I can't release this situation. Um, yeah, that was that was quite stressful. Um, but once that was all over with and I was like, do you know what? I just need to do this. Um, it, it went okay. So, and there was no other major problems. Um, there was a couple of testers didn't finish on time. Um, one has since finished. Um, yeah, no testing issues really. Um, just minor ones. And yeah. All good. So Violet Sand Socks is out now um, and it's available in five sizes. <laughs> and um, I hope you love it. It did. It sold really well when it like on release day. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And I haven't had anybody come at me yet. Um, now this is out and I've brought it to everybody's attention. <laughs> Maybe that's not such a good thing that I've done that. But you know, I make these videos because I want you to see um, what it's like on the designer side of things. Um, you see a pattern maybe teased, shown a little bit, and then boom, it's out. You don't really get to see what goes on in this side over here, where it's all maths and headaches and stress. So that's why I do the videos. Um, so you can see that. So, and I hope you like that. <laughs> hope you like seeing me stressed. <laughs> you know what I mean. So anyway, thank you very much for watching if you got this far. And um, yeah, please give the video a thumbs up because it really helps. And if you're not subscribed already, I would love you to subscribe. Um, yeah, I'll be doing more of these. I have more in the pipeline. I'm recording bits and bobs of patterns as we speak. So um, I completely forgot to do the Stormseeker tea. I've got the beginning bits and then nothing. So I'm sorry about that. There's no Stormseeker tea one of this coming out. Um, but I will do others. I, it's just getting into practice and reminding myself to record when I'm doing something. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and um, have a lovely rest of your day.